Okay, today we're going to talk about the differences between the Land Cruiser 300 and the Land Cruiser 250. There are differences in the vehicle construction, particularly the frame, that most people don't know about. Yes, it's true. The Land Cruiser 250 is based on the Land Cruiser 300, but the frames are different. We're going to talk about these differences here and see what we can discover and see what we can deduce here. Now this is one of the lead engineers on the Land Cruiser 250 and here we have a Land Cruiser 250 frame again TNGAF platform but he's going to point out the differences here between the Land Cruiser 300 frame and the Land Cruiser 250 frame. The first thing to realize is that the Land Cruiser 250 frame is lighter. So they essentially uh, made the metal uh, not as thick as the Land Cruiser 300 frame. So this is a Land Cruiser 250 and they uh, shaved it back quite a bit. Now the first change that's noteworthy between the Land Cruiser 300 and 250 is the frame, the front part of the frame here was reduced or pulled back inward towards the cabin a bit presumably to increase or improve the approach angle. Here the engineer is pointing to this front frame member here and this is essentially the most forward part of your uh, ladder frame and here you can see in aluminum this kind of the, this is the the bumper or whatever but uh, he's explaining that this black piece has been reduced or scaled back compared to the Land Cruiser 300 again to in increase or improve the approach angle. Here again is another shot of this front area in front of the bumper that has been reduced or scaled back a bit. <clears throat> now there's going to be a common theme of scaling stuff back and weight savings and reducing metal. Now it's going to be up to you to decide if that is cost savings, efficiency, or engineering genius. The engineer is now secondly explaining that the rear bumper, so this rearmost part of the ladder frame, has also been reduced or shortened or moved inward towards the cabin, presumably to increase or improve the departure angle as well. So he's saying that he's done uh, some shavings on the rear here to help improve those angles and again weight savings. Here we can see the black front piece missing from the front side of the bumper. So this is the aluminum kind of crash bar. And we can see that uh, Lexus and Toyota have a lot of breathing room here uh, with reducing the front end of this if they wanted to. You know, this could be the true approach angle here if they really wanted to, to uh, increase that approach angle. So that is possible because on uh, vehicles like the 4Runner uh, and the Lexus GX460, this is what you see in the front here. You don't see that black piece extending so Toyota I believe can can really increase this uh, or make this approach angle really really appealing that is if they choose to let's see we'll go back to the actual Land Cruiser 250 here and here you can see the aluminum here and this is the true crash bumper but you can see again this black piece extends the nose of this thing and so again this can theoretically he you know by Lexus and Toyota engineers be removed or scaled back to increase the approach angle so what he's saying here essentially is hey compared to the Land Cruiser 300 on your Land Cruiser 250 we made this black piece smaller and we changed the angles around to make everything better for you at this point the engineer is explaining that this cross section down here where he is pointing at in the ladder frame has been made thinner compared to the Land Cruiser 300 now his reasoning is weight savings and material savings. Now again, it's up to you to decide if that is legit or this is more of a cost saving measure. Because again, this whole frame is the same size as the Land Cruiser 300. But they have to sell this thing way cheaper than a Land Cruiser 300. So is this weight savings uh, in, the, in the name of uh, engineering excellence or is this penny pinching and uh, you know stretching the the budget and uh, accounting and the peanuts and you know everything you know people ramble about uh, automotive engineers doing in order to save uh, half of a penny uh, because in the bottom line it increases profits the bottom line is the engineer is saying we made this frame thinner this cross section is thinner materials than the Land Cruiser 300. The engineer then goes to, on to explain that the little things have been shaved here and there. You can see where I'm going with this, but that's where he's going. 
Uh, he's made the stuff thinner, and he's shaved off every little bitty thing that he could think of from the Land Cruiser 300 to, in his words, save weight. Here, for example, he's pointing at a uh, cross member that goes over the uh, part of the rear differential, and he's explaining that it has saved about 10% weight in weight compared to the Land Cruiser 300. And again, a common theme, there's just a lot of weight savings here with the Land Cruiser 250 frame. Now, it's not all about weight savings. This engineer is going on to say that he fine-tuned and tweaked the suspension on the Land Cruiser 250 versus the Land Cruiser 300 by really playing around with spacing out the springs, the distance between the shock mounts, and all other sort of uh, minutia in order to really balance the suspension out. For instance, he's pointing at the shock absorber location here, how it is slightly tweaked versus the Land Cruiser 300 a rear shock absorber position in order to maximize the balance of the vehicle both on and off-road. Now here the engineer is making a balancing uh, motion with his pointer here, which shows that he understands that off-road vehicles such as the Land Cruiser have to be in balance. It's not about a lift kit, it's not about putting this thing up on you know, a 3-inch or 5-inch lift to make it the ultimate off-road machine. <laughs> This is an actual engineer who actually off-roads these things in, under scientific conditions. And he has a team to back him up. And what he's explaining with this balancing motion is that your suspension geometry and your suspension system and your Land Cruiser must remain in balance in order to perform optimally. This is something I rant on this channel about all the time. A lot of people like to put lifts, lift kits on their brand new Land Cruisers. They buy one of these things and they proceed to ruin it by taking off all the stock suspension and ruin what this engineer and his team, all their R&D, all their, all their testing goes right out the window. You throw off this Japanese precision and Japanese balance, these Tokikos, these KYBs, and you throw on your Chinese 3-inch lift kit and all of this stuff uh, completely gets ruined. And by stuff, I mean balance which he's showing here with this, you know, he's talking about how you're on a roll or a pitch and you're, you're sideways on a mountain, and that's the point of your suspension system. You're not going to see lifted trucks off camber or all, off kilter or doing any, any sort of, uh, you know, stuff that involves extreme pitches and roll. That's where a, a stock suspension geometry vehicle uh, really, really shines, and that's what he's desperately uh, trying to explain here to the viewers. Now, naturally, this is going to fall on deaf ears to the quote-unquote modding community out there, but uh, do believe that uh, Toyota R&D has, again, actual engineers who understand the balance of an off-road vehicle and what it's truly trying to accomplish, and that is to hold the road off-road. Uh, not just uh, on a flat surface, but going uphill, downhill, and again, pitch and roll and yaw and all sorts of weird, squirrely angles. This is what he is trying to explain here. So here we are on a black diamond trail in a Lexus GX460. This is stock suspension. This is the actual horizon. So you can see the actual roll angle of this GX460 is very much near a 40 to 45 degree angle. We're not going to see any lifted vehicle or modified suspension vehicle doing anything remotely like this. And the reason you're not going to see anything remotely like this is because, again, once you lift a vehicle, it already thinks it's down, one of its wheels is down in a ditch. And you're going to have, you're basically going to tip or you're going to get tippy. So you're not going to see this sort of roll angle being exploited on a lifted vehicle. You can only exploit this sort of roll angle on a uh, stock height vehicle that has been engineered appropriately and that's what that engineer is trying to explain. He understands what we're doing here. He's done it a zillion million more times than we have and so has his team. And that's what they're trying to offer you. That's what Toyota is trying to offer you with their excellent stock Land Cruiser suspension. <laughs> Here's an example here of, of going, look at the angle on this GX460, look at that angle of the roof, and uh, a lifted vehicle is not going to be happy in that situation. But don't take my word for it. Take the word of the engineer who actually made this thing. Balance is a thing. It's a very, very real thing. 
And unfortunately, many people never realize what is packed in right out of the box in stock form in this brilliantly engineered Land Cruiser family. I'm talking about any of them. He is pointing this out. He's proud of this. And so I'm ranting a little bit, but so is this engineer. He's saying we, we've we are really balancing this thing out to do amazing things off-road with its ability to resist pitch and roll and yaw and all sorts of crazy angles and articulate all over the place. So please, please enjoy it. Don't ruin it with a cheap Chinese aftermarket lift even though the shocks are painted neon green or neon purple. Because your Land Cruiser 250 or your Land Cruiser 300 is going to have Tokiko shocks and they're going to be painted black. And that may not trigger uh, certain people depending on what market they are in, in the world, aka the American market who thinks these things need to be red with red coil springs in order to mean anything. <laughs> I've said it a million times, this engineer is stating that you're either going to get uh, Tokikos or KYBs if they're going to be adjustable shocks. Okay, Tokikos are already aftermarket shocks. There's no such thing as a Toyota shock. You're getting Tokiko shocks. You are paying for the best and you're getting the best. All right, next focus on these uh, arms here. The, the engineer is then uh, showcasing the control arms. He's basically saying that the Land Cruiser 250 has some minor tweaks in the positioning of these upper control arms, that's these rods here, and the lower control arms and this lateral arm. Yes, I know some people call these different things, but their engineer explains that these are your upper control arm, this is your lower control arm, that's your lateral arm. And this positions the axle nice and firm. Many trucks have this system, but Toyota has perfected the angle, so when you get in these one of these trucks, the rear axle, which likes to typically flop around and wander around, you can really feel it on other vehicles, it stays planted and it gives a, a, a very good feeling uh, when you're driving this thing, like it's connected, everything's connected, nothing's flopping around in the rear. Now here we can see the engineers pointing at one of these uh, lower control arms on the uh, rear axle, and again, he's explaining that there's just minor angular differences between the Land Cruiser 300's position and this Land Cruiser 250 position that you see here. His claims are it fine-tunes and refines what the Land Cruiser 300 uh, is already doing insofar as on and off-road performance. How much a difference does it make? Is it marginal? Is it significant? Who knows, but there are differences. All right, next the engineer starts talking about the crumple zones in the frame. This is the front of the ladder frame that you're looking at. And these little indentations here where the arrows are and where the mouse is pointing, where everybody's pointing right here, uh, they're meant to crumple under an impact. And this is essentially a, uh, you know, a safety thing. So the engineer is talking about how the Land Cruiser 250 is made to be super safe for a, a ladder frame vehicle because it's going to fold up in a front end collision and not you know enter the uh, passenger cabin and hurt anybody so this next one is on all tngaf platforms so again we're looking at the ladder frame here and he's discussing tailor welded blanks or essentially laser welding so where he's pointing right here we can see a seam and this seam is actually a laser weld so we can see a traditional weld up here in the top of the ladder frame that looks like a traditional weld right but here we see a laser weld, and the idea here is to attach two thicknesses of metal, a thicker piece of metal to a thinner piece of metal. Now, it doesn't matter which order they're in. The point is to attach a thick gauge metal to a thin gauge metal. And traditionally, you do a uh, lap joint with that, and that lap weld or lap joint doesn't add any extra uh, strength. It just, take, it just makes extra weight. So by laser welding, you can get, essentially get a butt weld. That's the point of my rambling here. You can butt thick to thin, where before you used to have to lap thick to thin, and that lap would uh, add a bunch of weight. Let's pretend this middle section here is the thick piece of metal, and you want to attach a thinner piece of metal. The laser welding could just butt these up, and the laser has such a precision weld that they become one piece. Before laser welding, they would have to take this thinner piece of metal and lap it, meaning sit it over top, and there'd be an overlap of a quarter inch or whatever, and then they'd lay in a weld, and that lap would make a, 
a bunch of weight throughout the whole vehicle. So this is all about weight savings and efficiency here. So overall from this video, uh, we gain that there's, uh, there's differences between the Land Cruiser 250 frame and the Land Cruiser 300 frame, even though they're on the same platform. Now we don't know all the details. This engineer only shared very little essentially basically that the frame is lighter and there's minor tweaks here and there he's very very proud of this the suspension geometry and testing that he's done but there's also stuff that he's not mentioning uh, that's yet to be discovered for instance here we see where the mouse is, is a frame mounted bump stop and then there's one provision for the bump stop right here where the uh, mouse hits on the lower control arm on the Land Cruiser 300 there are two of these it appears on the Land Cruiser 250, there's only one of these. The engineer has not mentioned this. This is just something that, uh, you know, Toyota dorks and nerds picked up on, uh, talked about online. So there are more differences, and these differences will kind of come out uh, as these vehicles enter the real world and people pick them apart. But for now, the bottom line is there are differences between these various TNGAF platform trucks and SUVs. All Toyota trucks and SUVs are now on one singular platform, but it is not a carbon copy Land Cruiser 300 frame with just a few minor you know, differences added to the body and the off-road components. Indeed, as the engineer is explaining, there are frame differences. You decide if they're minor, if this is cost-cutting, weight savings, genius, cheapening out, or anything in between. The point is, it's different. It's not a Land Cruiser 300 for all Toyota and Lexus buyers. Now, some may view the changes between the Land Cruiser 300 frame and the Land Cruiser 250 frame as improvements. Yeah, you know, this thing came out in 2021, so there was a delay between the, the 300 and 250. And so you might view it as, hey, they improve stuff between the 300 and 250. That's one way to view it. The other way to view it, the more cynical view or whatever you want to call it, uh, might say, no, they they didn't want to give people, meaning everybody who bought a Toyota truck and SUV, a full-on, beefy, well-built, top-tier flagship Land Cruiser 300 ladder frame. They didn't want to give them that on their Tacoma, on their Fortuner, on their Hilux, on their Tundra, on their Land Cruiser Prado, on their Land Cruiser 250, etc., they weren't about to give them the real Land Cruiser 300 frame on all their vehicles. So it's depend it depends on your perspective and how, uh, how you want to look at things. I'll leave that up to you. Did Toyota shave this Land Cruiser 300 uh, frame down in order to get this thing to be sold as the Land Cruiser 250 for way cheaper? And the engineer is just you know basically given a sales pitch about how awesome it is when in reality uh, the executives at Toyota went to him and said we need you to make this cheaper but it's being sold to you by him as lighter and more improved and more advanced and this that and the other again that's up for you to decide either way it's a Toyota you can argue all day and night should they have consolidated all these frames and everybody has differing opinions the uh, most helpful information here will be, however, that the frames are indeed different, and I'm glad that at least one Toyota engineer is uh, open and uh, speaking about it, albeit in Japanese, but uh, we've done that translation for you here today.